A warm welcome back to Globetrotting. The A320 family with Airbus is incredibly popular, and for decades, it's been a leader in the single aisle space. The potential of this family of aircraft is immense, and Airbus is strategically positioned to enhance its aircraft types, enhance overall appeal, and obviously, wherever possible, gain a competitive edge over Boeing and the 737 MAX series. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I've really appreciated the support across the last few videos and we're nearing 50,000. So firstly, addressing one of my last points in the introduction, for Airbus to pounce on the misfortunes that we've seen unfold at Boeing with their 737 MAX especially, there's one thing Airbus will need to be able to follow through on, and that's its production plans, where it wants to increase the production of its A320 family in the coming years, targeting at a maximum 75 aircraft per month by the mid to late point of this decade. This increase is crucial. Airbus knows it needs to meet growing demand for single aisle aircraft, not just driven by the recovery of our industry following the global pandemic, but the rising demand for airlines to grow their fleets and bring in fuel efficient planes. It's also worth considering that many airlines are in sometimes the final stages of phasing out older aircraft to make way for newer ones, and the A320 Neo series becomes the perfect option for them. The backlog for plane makers such as Airbus in the single aisle network is also something that is colossal and is growing every single year, with the rate of orders to the rate of output simply not being enough. With the ramp up production being essential for Airbus to deliver aircraft to customers when they expect their planes, they know they also need to do this to capitalise on a sector that has seen booming demand. If Airbus wants to remain competitive and capitalise on this aforementioned booming demand, this is something they'll need to do. However, it's a lot easier said than done. Increasing production always is going to present several challenges, but those challenges analysts argue has been heightened tenfold due to supply chain difficulties that have plagued the industry this year and in previous ones too. The industry relies on many suppliers with so many different components just when it comes to building a plane and eventually getting it in the air. And many of these suppliers have been struggling, meaning for plane makers just like Airbus, they can't optimally produce their jets to eventually deliver them to their customers. There's more than just that to consider, but ultimately it's a tough position for Airbus to be in. And that is certainly a short to long term focus. If I'm strictly focusing on the short to medium term and what's next for this family, well, the future of the A320 is going to be through the enhancements of the A321neo series, particularly focusing on the innovative A321XLR variant, which complements the A321LR. The XLR, standing for extra long range, builds on the aforementioned LR offering even greater capabilities, but it is a plane that is yet to be certified. It is, though, considered a great step in the right direction for the program. It boasts a range of up to 4,700 nautical miles, which enables prospective customers, or existing ones, to connect city pairings that were previously unreachable, important to add, by a single aisle aircraft. However, even more so, this aircraft type I speak of opens up for greater flexibility within the airline network, and how they go about utilization. It can also ease pressure on existing wide body types that have, say, felt the brunt of the workload. Developments or enhancements such as what is being seen on the A321neo are more than just strategic in finding ways to, say, grow the market share and provide a solution to more customers. While these are important reasons, it's also important to remember that Airbus is still responding to Boeing, or the lack there of a response from Boeing in the market market segment. Ultimately, this has allowed the A321XLR to move forward largely uncontested, which provides risks for Boeing. And we know Boeing's made it very clear. They won't be addressing this sector. This period now allows Airbus to take on customers who may have previously not sided with them 
if the American plane maker had offered an alternative. But now we know with no alternative coming, the success experience at Airbus has some pretty long-term ramifications. The development of the XLR can lead to customers coming into their wings and ecosystem and frankly never leaving them. Analysts do deem the plane maker as excellent at marketing these planes for a wide array of missions, whether it is your stock standard A321neo or an extra long range variant. But there's a lot of focus on the short to medium term, whether that be through the production in increases and the challenges surrounding that, or the development of the A321neo family, but let's talk more long term. What's coming? Well, Airbus knows it needs to continue advancing and offering the best product possible to its airline customers. And we've had comments here and there about Airbus's plans. Nothing has necessarily come to fruition yet, but it's indicative of the plane maker still looking forward. Most notably in 2023, around the Paris Air Show, they said that while no program had launched, they were well underway in studying crucial technologies such as hydrogen and more for eventual adoption on commercial planes. Airbus knows its next plane needs not just to be leaps and bounds ahead of what it currently is offering, but it has to show significant improvements in sustainability and so many more areas. For the moment, executives said there wasn't a designated program, but rather research blocks that are being built upon towards a mid to late 2030 release giving you around more than a decade of room for the existing aircraft present to thrive and also giving you more than a decade to understand these technologies, test them, trial them and so much more and see more technologies develop for eventual implementation. As discussed, Airbus really wants to push the limitations of the aircraft that it will provide in the future. Ultimately, Airbus has already made it also clear that it wants whatever is next in this A320 family, if you will, to be 25 to 30% better off in terms of fuel burn over previous gen jets, which are technically now the ones operational, considered next gen, but will eventually be considered previous gen. Furthermore, you have to also remember that this plane will need to be able to at some point run on 100% sustainable aviation fuels. While it won't need to immediately, you have to remember that this next plane is going to be flying well into the 2060s, even the 2070s. Scary to say, I know, but it's something Airbus has to prepare for. Per the manufacturer's latest comments, a mid to late 2030s release is what they're targeting, and it's going to be a pivotal part of their future. Airbus knows they have to get it right. We also know that developing more efficient engines by engine manufacturers will be significant in the case of Airbus in allowing them to understand the direction of their focus for this next prospective airliner. Not only is it very important structurally how they design it for peak efficiency, but the engines that are eventually going to be whacked onto this are going to be a huge focal point too. Interestingly, as revealed in an interview on Aviation Week now some time ago, the Airbus Airbus CEO highlighted that planes such as the 737 and the first A320 entered the industry many, many decades ago. And this new era that I've been speaking of in the latter stages of this video can't just be an upgrade, can't be a re-engine, it can't be, say, a fuselage extension. There needs to be a massive refinement in what it means to travel. Airbus knows it has many years to get what is next right, and given the A320's successful showing so far, they know that at least they can ride this this program out. But it's critically important that their next plane serves airlines worldwide well. It has to be measured. It can't jump the gun on anything and it has to do a lot of studying. So it is over to you. What do you believe the future of the A320 family is? Not just in the short to medium term, but what does this type of aircraft look like in the late 2030s? Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. I do apologize if I sounded a little bit more flat currently battling some illness, so I appreciate your patience there. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days right here on Globetrotting.